Growing up, you certainly had your favorite TV channel that was home to some of your favorite cartoons. Looking back on them, you probably get some serious nostalgia thinking of some of the characters that became almost family to you. But it turns out that a lot of your favorite childhood cartoon shows were way darker than you may have realized, and some of them are hiding many secrets you may not have noticed. Behind closed doors and in the minds of some very creative artists lies a host of information that takes the innocent right out of your favorite cartoons. Today, we're happy to expose a few cartoons' biggest hidden details and secrets to shed light on a few mysteries, as well as to remember some of the most shocking moments that occurred in some of the most popular cartoons from the past. Let's take a look at our 10 amazing hidden details in popular cartoon episodes. Much to the fans' disappointment, Invader Zim only lasted two seasons. Its interesting storylines and hilariously dark humor appealed to many. Gaz and Dib are siblings whose relationship is very broken and somewhat dysfunctional, with Gaz bullying and abusing Dib and Dib taking very little interest in Gaz or what she has to say. This is why the next detail is not quite an obvious one, but it is undoubtedly a strange one concerning their odd relationship. In one episode, where Dib accidentally made everything taste like pork, it seems like these siblings are holding hands, which would be extremely extremely strange and would have been a rare and unexpected moment of affection. Did you ever wonder why Smurfette always seemed to be the only female Smurf in the village? Well, there's a story behind it, and you may have missed its real meaning. Initially, in the comics, she was created by their wizard nemesis, Gargamel, in order to track and trap the male Smurfs with her feminine charms. What's more, she was also a brunette. Eventually, she deserts Gargamel and asks Papa Smurf to turn her into a real Smurf, making her the blonde we all know. If you weren't already concerned about the message that appears to send across, it's then when the Smurfs fall in love with her and continuously argue over her, sending the entire village into the chaos Gargamel wanted. On the first look, the restaurant, Krusty Krab, is shaped exactly like a lobster trap. SpongeBob and his friends are the sizes of actual sea creatures, which means they are only a few inches tall. So they reappropriated a forgotten trap to use as a family-style fast food restaurant. Though this might seem like no big deal, it turned out it actually is. Krabby Patties became very popular among all the characters on the show, but one has always wondered what they are made from. While fan theories are abundant, the answer might have been in front of us the whole time. The first episode that featured the secret formula heavily was called Imitation Crab and provided an image of the official recipe for Krabby Patties. In Friend or Foe, the secret recipe is discovered after a whole shelf of ingredients crashes into a bowl. It turns out that the meat is made of crabs, which by default, would make Mr. Krabs a cannibal. Since the Krusty Krab is a lobster catcher, the Krabby Patties are naturally made of meat caught in these contraptions. He has killed and served up all his crab friends for the business, which is why he and his mother are seemingly the only crabs in town. If this wasn't enough to convince you, you should consider the fact that every other menu item at the Krusty Krab contains the key ingredient in its name, kelp shake, coral bits, and sea foam soda. The Powerpuff Girls contains a secret that you might have missed if you never watched Sleeping Beauty. It turns out the three good fairies of Disney's 1959 Sleeping Beauty share the Powerpuff Girls color scheme, red, blue, and green. However, there's another similarity. Each fairy was named Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, and supposedly the names line up with each girl's personality from the Powerpuff Girls. The sweet one, the spunky one, and the tough one, better known as Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Another not-so-dark secret you might have missed in the show was the framed pictures in the background. The portraits on the walls that can be seen in several episodes are of the animators themselves, which was a brilliant and devious decision by the artists to immortalize themselves. Fans who grew up watching Hey Arnold certainly have a soft spot for Helga, as her desperate crush on Arnold and her parents' lack of attention made her pretty sensitive. But there's another side to Helga's home life that some viewers might not have noticed. Helga had an alcoholic mother. As Ziegler points out, Helga's mom, Miriam, often seems incoherent or like she isn't at all there. In season one's Olga Comes Home, for example, Helga's sister experiences a depressive episode where she doesn't leave her bed for several days. When Helga's dad says that his daughter can't just lay around the house moping, Miriam responds, sure she can, I do. Besides, she also slurs her words. She's always using blenders to make her smoothies, which were likely spiked with some moonshine, and there's an episode where it's said that she had her license revoked and was required to do some community service.
No matter how many times these imaginary friends fail to find their forever home, they know Madam Foster's gothic mansion will always welcome them. There isn't really anything dark about the adorably witty Foster's home for imaginary friends on the surface, but behind the innocent adventures and hopeful friendships lies the sad story of Craig McCracken's adopted dogs. When McCracken and his then fiance decided to adopt two dogs from an animal shelter, the cartoonist started to wonder what his pet's lives were like before he came along. He understood that they were now forced to start over with complete strangers and decided to explore that train of thought using imaginary friends instead of animals. Maybe this explains why the imaginary friends seem to sabotage their own adoption process frequently. In the early 90s, one of the favorite cartoons to watch was Darkwing Duck. Tad Stones created the cartoon as an alternate universe of DuckTales series, and it was unusually quirky and innocent until the 1992 Halloween episode. Originally aired on October 31st, 1992, the episode starts with Darkwing and Gozolin visiting Morgana's old magic school. There, Gozolin gets interested in spending the day taking classes to hopefully become a wizard. All this was observed by Beezlebub, where he sees the perfect opportunity to get Darkwing and his Lair. So, he goes topside and disguises himself as a janitor to trick Gozolin by giving her a spellbook that doesn't require any calculations. Gozolin didn't know that the book came from the Library of Forbidden Spells, and that the devil goes after Darkwing's soul. Since it had primarily been produced for kids, this episode had gone too far, which is why it only aired a few times before it was removed. Inspector Gadget was a smart and hilarious animated version of the old TV series Get Smart and ran original episodes for only three seasons, from 1983 to 1986, but played in syndication throughout the remainder of the decade and well into the 90s. Supposedly, Inspector Gadget was a human who had every gadget known to humanity. He wasn't the most intelligent tack on the board, as he often relied on Penny and Brain to accomplish all the real detective work. According to one theory, Inspector Gadget is not a person, but a robot created by Penny. This led to the belief that the antagonist of the series, Dr. Claw, is the real Inspector Gadget. According to his theory, Dr. Claw was a detective who suffered a horrible accident and went crazy. Due to this, his niece Penny created the robot Inspector Gadget seen in the cartoon to deal with her grief. While this has never been confirmed, the theory makes way more sense than the supposed real version. The Fairly Odd Parents has been around for years, as many people loved watching the trio getting in and out of jams constantly. The cartoon premiered on Nickelodeon in 2001, but had actually been around since 1998 in the form of cartoon shorts. The story is based on Timmy, who was neglected by his parents and tortured by Vicky, the babysitter. Because of the nature of his environment, some believe that the fairies presented to Timmy were representations of antidepressants. Besides, this theory fits the theme in the 90s and early 2000s right on the nose. Timmy's fairy godparents are supposed to represent Zoloft and Prozac to help Timmy with his issues and problems. The theory is strengthened by arguing that they showed up when his troubles began and that there are side effects when he abuses their magic. SpongeBob's naive and not-so-smart neighbor Patrick doesn't seem to have anything in common with Gary, the bright pet snail acting like a cat. However, if you delve deep into their family trees, you will find out that they are actually cousins. Patrick and Gary's family history is explored in the Season 4 episode, Rule of Dumb, where it's also revealed that the two are descended from royalty. Their relationship comes to the courtesy of Patrick's grandparents, Ma Tucket and Billy Bob Starr, who had three children, Herb Starr, Sluggo Starr, and the third child who parented Patrick's cousin. Cousin Ed. Herb married Maggie Star and had Patrick and his sister Sam, while Sluggo had Gary with Miss Wilson. It might be easy to believe that Gary, being the hyper intelligent snail that he is, would have some royal blood in him, but that's not the case with Patrick. 